Okay, now we're going to take a look at the other use of the law of cosines. And the other use of the law of cosines is to solve a triangle in which you're given two sides and the angle um, that's included or the angle that's between them. Okay, that's the uh, situation we're going to be looking at now. Uh, the formula, let me go ahead and talk to you about the formula. Let me draw a triangle first. I'll label it the way we've been labeling things all along, and that is using small letters to indicate the sides, and capital letters opposite their sides to indicate the angles. Opposite angle B, opposite angle, uh, sorry, opposite sides B, opposite side C. The uh, former uh, version of the law of cosines that I gave you in a previous video, and you probably should watch, if you haven't watched the side-side-side version of the law of cosines, you probably should look at that first, because that's where I give this formula. But the formula I gave in the previous video was the cosine of c equals a squared plus b squared minus c squared all over 2ab. Okay. Now, in this case, when we've got the side angle side situation, this formula doesn't help us very much. So we need to have another formula that actually solves for a side, and the side we're going to solve for is C. We're going to rearrange this formula. I'm going to multiply both sides by 2AB first. So that's the formula I have. And then I'm going to add C squared to both sides and I'm going to subtract that 2AB cosine C term from both sides. The final version that I get here looks like this. Now as I've said repeatedly and I said in the last video, you do not need to get hung up on which letters are which. Here's what you need to know, and this is just like the other version as well. That is, if we're talking about side C, that is opposite angle C. Okay? The two sides that you square and add together and the two sides that are multiplied together, in other words, all of those sides are the two adjacent sides to that angle that's opposite the side we're looking for. The two sides that make up that angle. The angle C is, is in between or is included between those two sides. And then side the side that we're looking for, we take the cosine of that angle opposite it. So again, if we're looking for a particular side, the opposite side is what we're going to use, excuse me, the opposite angle is what we're going to use for the cosine, right? And that's going to turn out to be the only angle we've got in the problem. And the sides we're going to use are the sides that are adjacent to that angle. And it turns out that those that's the information that's given to us in the problem anyway. So we really don't have to worry about it because we've got a side angle side situation. The two sides that are given to you in the problem and the angle that's given to you in the problem are going to be your sides A and B and your cosine big C respectively. So I think this will become clearer to you when we actually do a problem. So let's go ahead and do a problem. Let me move this down a little bit. All we need to see is that formula right there. Okay, so let me draw a for, let me draw a um, a triangle for you. You know what? Let's make it. Get rid of that. Let's get back to black here. All right, here we go. Let's say this is my triangle. Again, not drawn to scale and never assume that anything is drawn to scale. I give you an angle of 42 degrees and the two adjacent sides are 14 and 20. Solve the triangle. So, as you can see, I hope we have a side angle side situation. A situation where we have two sides, 14 and 20, 
and the angle that's included between them, the 42 degrees. So as I said, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to use this formula, the c squared equals a squared plus b squared minus 2ab cosine c. So the angle we're going to find, or excuse me, the side we're going to find is going to be the opposite angle to that side. To the, excuse me, one more time. The side we're going to find is opposite the angle we are given in the problem. How's that? Okay, the angle we're given in the problem is 42 degrees, so the side that's opposite that 42 degree, 42 degree angle is this side right here. So that's going to be our angle C. That's the side we're looking for. Okay, let's plug in some numbers. So we know C squared, and as I said to you earlier, we don't really have to concern ourselves too much with which two sides we're talking about when we talk about A and B, and which angle we're talking about when we talk about angle C, because there's only two sides and an angle given to us in the problem. So my two sides are 14 squared plus 20 squared minus 2 times 14 times 20. There's our sides A and B times the cosine of the only angle we're given in the problem, and that's 42 degrees. I need you to be, although I'm not going to work it through with you, I need you to be very, very careful with this formula. Make sure that you're putting this all in parentheses, or you could also do it all at once first, okay? And then do the subtraction. Um, very, very common mistake. Make sure all of this is multiplied together before you subtract. Sometimes that involves putting in parentheses, which helps. Uh, sometimes uh, doing that part of the formula first helps. Okay? The other thing you need to remember when you do all of these problems, and I've said it in other videos as well and will say it, and that is do not round in the middle of a problem. You do not round your answer until the very, very end. In other words, don't do the thing in the box here and then round that answer before you subtract it from your 14 squared plus 20 squared. Also recall that this gives you C squared. It does not give you C. So when you get to your final answer for the right-hand side of this formula, you do have to square root that answer to get what C is. And in this case, if you do it on your calculator, I'll leave that to you, you get 13.41 as the measure of that side, of that third side that we did not have. So let's go ahead and write that in. This is 13.41 rounded to two decimal places. Okay? Like we did with SSS and the law of cosines, once we've done the law of cosines once, we can convert back over to the law of sines, which is a little easier to remember. You don't have to do the law of cosines over and over and over. Okay? you can do the law of, co uh, law of sines again. So let's do the law of sines. So what have we got? We've got the sine of 42 degrees over its opposite side, 13.41, equals, and we're going to find one of, our, one of our other angles. Oh, I don't know. What should we do? How about this angle right here, x? We'll call it angle x. The sine of x over 20. Okay? If you do this math, again, there's two ways to do it. You can either cross multiply this or even more simply just multiply both sides by 20 to get the sine of x by itself. But be aware that the answer you get is the sine of the angle, not the angle. So you need to use the inverse or arc sine button on your calculator, which is second or shift sine button to get the actual angle. If you do this, you will find that your angle value is, oh, what did we get? 86.34 degrees. Pretty close to a right angle there, isn't it? Okay, so we're going to write that in now because we've just found that angle. That was 86.34 degrees. And I know it's that angle because it was the one opposite the 20 degree angle. I was the, sorry, the 20 side. Okay, and then my last angle, we can simply um, subtract the sum. That doesn't look very good, does it? Let's fix that. That's 86. That's much better. Okay, and to find our third angle, we can add our two angles together to get 128.34 and subtract from 180 degrees, and you get 51.66 degrees. Again, rounded to two decimal places. 
Okay? So that's how we find or we solve an oblique triangle using the law of cosines with an SAS situation, a situation where you know two angle, excuse me, two sides and the angle in between them. Okay? And just as a quick review, what we do is we use this formula here. You don't need to worry about A, B, and C because the only two sides you're given in the problem are A and B, and the only angle you're given in the problem is angle C. There's only two sides in an angle given. The, a the side that this solves for is the one that is opposite the angle that's given to you in the problem. Once you get that side, you can then use the law of sines to determine one of the other missing angles, and then the third angle you can get from subtracting the sum of the two that you have from 180 degrees. That's using the law of cosines with a side-angle-side situation. Thanks.